Hey, welcome back to LearnPiezo.org. Today we are going to be using a simulation program called Comsol to witness the converse piezoelectric effect where we apply a voltage and then from that voltage we get a strain or we can understand that we get a displacement which I will call for lack of a better term delta D. So if you can recall what the equation for uh, the constitutive equation, the reduced one, for a applied electric field E, you multiply that with the piezoelectric constant D in the particular direction you're talking about. So here we're going to be working with the D33, which is in the thickness direction, the same direction as the polarization. And this property is actually measured under constant stress, which means that they're all free boundary conditions. You, the only force is sort of the internal forces developed from the electric, electrical field. Electrical field is going to be in the three direction and the strain then will also be witnessed in the three direction. As we know strain is the changing length over the total length or here we're going to be calling it the length will be the thickness of the ceramic. This, this, let's say this is the polarization direction, and um, we have a, we have a width, and we have a thickness. Or well, you know, you just have your dimensions there. Not too complicated. You can figure that out. I'll just leave that as d. An electric field is volts per length. Or I'll just change all this to thickness. That just makes it easier to understand thickness. So we have these thicknesses cancel. So what we basically get is a change in thickness equals, or that's also called displacement. Equals the piezoelectric D coefficient times the voltage. So now let's witness this by designing a simple piezoelectric block or rectangular sample and then we will apply it, uh, apply voltage to it. So we will go to COMSOL, this is COMSOL version 5, model wizard, 3D in this case. Then I will go to structural mechanics piezoelectric devices add and I'll add all the necessary physics in order for this to work. Study I want to look at a stationary result and dot right because we're doing a static. And here we have it. The first thing we want to do is change that meters to millimeters because that's primarily the, the unit we work in. We want to add a geometry. <clears throat> in order to do that, we'll go to the geometry panel. And I will not just create a block, which I could have done. Uh, I will, let's say, let's add a work plane. And within that work plane, I'll define a rectangle. Well, actually, I'll just do a circle. Eh, whatever. Do a circle about at zero, zero here. And let's say this is a one millimeter circle, which is sort of small. I think I'll just make that 10 millimeters wide, build all. And this is zoom out. And also, I'm just going to make another circle right there in the center much smaller. I'll just do that and just make this 0 0.2 below. Okay, so we have these two circles. Then the next thing I'm going to do is extrude it. And you'll see sort of why I'm doing this. 
in a couple of seconds. Oh, a couple of minutes. So I'm shooting it one with all objects. So now we have our disk, our piezoelectric electric disk. And we all we just basically go down this right right column here and we just now we assign our material. And we have to use a piezoelectric electric material. Luckily they have that in the database. We'll use PZT, lead zirconate titanate, which there are many different types. The very standard one is PZT4. So we will just add that. And we're done with this case. Solid mechanics. For some reason I wasn't able to make this simulation work without adding a fixed boundary condition. Um, usually you will have something like that anyway in your equation. So basically I made that little circle such that I can only fix a small amount of the um, constraint. So I'm just going to fix this part. And, and actually, you and you when you're practically doing experiments, you're gonna your sample is gonna be supported somehow. Um, so in this case, I just fixed that little tiny portion. And, uh, hopefully, it's not gonna affect nothing. It's not gonna affect anything. So now we move on to electrostatics. And let's just zoom out again. Um, we have to apply voltage, and that voltage will be one. And we have to apply ground. on the bottom and we should also apply ground to this little part right there we'll, we'll... yeah we gotta like add that there okay so we have to apply the potential the two little portions that that, that portion's missing here so this one that and that okay now we're done with the ground which is on the bottom and the voltage electric potential which is on the top and the other thing I want to do when I go to peel such material I want to change it into strain charge form because then we're actually going to get the peel such D coefficient uh, the alternative the standard setting is to use the peel electric E coefficient which is not directly calculated from any standard method that I'm aware of. It's more more derived from measuring all the properties and then using matrix calculations to determine it. But however, the PLC G coefficient can be readily determined. So much of the time, when we talk equations, we talk in terms of D and the compliance in terms of constant electric field. So with that, if you go back to our material properties. Here they're now in they're now in terms of D according to a constant electric field and stress. And the pitch of peel's electric D coefficient is about five hundred. Here. Oh it's about it's about two hundred and thirty nine. So let's just uh we're gonna be verifying that. So we now we just go down to mesh. We can use extra extra fine and uh, to be honest with you I think we will we'll do much better in our simulation if we make this a little bit larger um, let us zoom out so we'll just we'll just have that as 10 So, I don't want to mess with the mesh and stuff, it'll just come out fine. What does the mesh look like with extra fine? That's too much. How about normal? That's good enough. Okay, um, then study, compute. So you see there's only stress here 
Actually, when you apply an electric field to a piezoelectric material, it expands to its zero straight, zero stress, uh, a zero stress uh, condition. For example, when you heat a material, it expands. But when the material expands, it's not under stress. Stress internal stress is actually causing to expand, and once it finishes expanding, there's no more internal stress. However, if you clamp it in any way, you'll develop stress. So there, it's, it's actually correct that there's no stress involved here. So next, I actually want to produce a displacement plot. That's fine. And uh, that's also OK. So let's just plot it. So we see the maximum displacement is a little more than 3 times 10 to the negative 7 millimeters. I'm actually going to change this and make it into meters. Actually, I actually can leave it into millimeters because we are uh, we have 10 millimeters length, so it's easy to calculate. Um, so, but however, in order to find that exact number, we'll do something else. And this is little, some small tricks or some small useful values. So we'll just make a probe, a domain point probe. We'll just add that right there. And it's going to be measuring displacement, which is good. And then we're going to actually have to run the solution again. But it doesn't take so long. Two, meg two gigabytes, I don't know what it's doing. Um, so, probe. 2.9 times 10 to the negative 7 millimeters. Let's go back here and start, start working out those numbers. So we have a change in, we have a displacement of uh, 2.9 times 10 to the negative 7 millimeters. Uh, we actually should do this in voltage. I mean, I mean we should do this in meters. So that's 2.9 times 10 to the minus 10 meters equals the piezoelectric D coefficient. Well, let's say we don't know it. And what's the applied voltage? 1 volt. So what does this end up being? If you can do algebra, that's cool. And then this will actually end up being uh, 2.9, sorry, 290 picocoulombs per newton, or you can do two, two, 290 um, meters per volt. And it's meters per volt because when you multiply volts per meter, which is the unit of electric field, times meters per volt, you get cancellation of units, which is, the, that's the exact unit of strain, because strain has no units. So 290 is our measurement from this. And obviously this is represented in the material properties, so we're just going to go take a look at that real fast. Let's go to the material properties. This just seems like a little bit annoying to look at. So the D31 is negative 123, E to the minus 12. There it is again. Two hundred eighty-two point eight nine. Yep, this is exactly right. So therefore, we have now sort uh, determined how you might think about doing an experimental if you have a way of measuring the displacement, which there are many ways um, to measure uh, displacement in the micron size. So how many microns did it displace? That's the next question. 0 0.29 micrometers, right? Wrong. Because this is 2.9 times 6, so, so it's 2.9 times e to the minus 4 
micrometers. So this is, we're going from meters to micrometers. It's a little bit easier. Um, or not. But this is basically the number right here. Which would then be... Oh, well. Uh, which would then be the micro micrometers, which is hardly anything, which is why we use resonance, why we use large voltages, why we use multi-layer multi structures to increase the electric field. So next time, um, we're going to be going over using the direct piezoelectric effect. And if you apply a stress, capital X, to a piezo, and then we get out a voltage. Uh, and that relationship we will discuss in our next video. So again, the next video in this series is going to be regarding the converse piezoelectric effect. Sorry, the direct. And this is important for sensors and energy harvesters. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. <sighs>